Oh, thanks to note. The video, speaking, and screen sharing function are available to presenters, but disabled for participants to avoid unauthorized persons or offensive content. You can leave and rejoin the meeting at any time, unless the meeting is at capacity or you are removed for inappropriate behavior. You can communicate through the Q&A feature. Multiple opportunities for questions will be provided throughout the presentation. And the presentation additional materials will be available at a2gov.org slash Pontiac slide. So technology overview, ask a question or share a comment. We will be using the Q&A feature for those using a computer and the raise hand feature for those who are on the phone. If you're on the computer, please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the screen to ask a question or provide a comment. Type your question or comment and click send. If you have come in through the phone, select star nine to raise your hand. You will be identified by the last three digits of your phone number. Slide. So next I will be launching a demographic demographic poll, which is completely optional. We use this information to gain a better understanding of who we are reaching. This helps us to continuously improve public engagement. Again, this is completely optional and I will leave it open for a short time. So I'm gonna launch that poll now. And I'm just gonna leave that open for a little bit. All righty, I'm going to leave it open for a little bit longer and then I will close it. All righty. Thank you for those. We appreciate that feedback. It's very helpful. So, next slide. So Zoom meeting norms, commit to learning and avoid speculation. We encourage you to ask questions through the Q&A feature so we can explore the issues together. When speaking over the phone, please move to a quiet area and silence any background sounds. We wanna be sure that we hear what you are saying. Please remember the importance of rights and dignity of others. With that, we ask that you critique ideas, not people, are thoughtful about your language so that this can be a comfortable and respectful forum for all participants. Inappropriate written and or verbal comment or language, including personal attacks and accusations, will result in the attendee being removed from the meeting. If there's anything else you would like to add to meeting norms, feel free to drop it in the Q&A function. So next slide, thank you. Follow up expectations. Your feedback will be considered in the in the recommended design in addition to technical and cost considerations. An additional public engagement meeting will be held at the 60 to 80% design completion stage to show how design progress reflects public engagement input and gather comments before design completion. The project team will reach out to you directly for coordination if the project has the potential to impact your private property. Slide, thank you. So. What is going to be covered during this presentation? First, introductions, then project limits, which includes project purpose and need, anticipated elements of the project, project timeline, which then will be followed up by a question and answer portion, and finally, next steps. So to start off the introduction, I'll be passing it over to Chris Wall, who is the senior project manager, and he will introduce his team. Chris, on to you. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Andrea. Um, just walk through the team members here. So I, I am with Wei Trim, as Andrea said, I'm a senior project manager. Um, we'll also be having uh, Bon 
Martin uh, speak um, during the presentation, as well as Brianna Anderson, who's our design lead. Carmel Tremblay is also on, who's a design manager, as well as Ryan Brown. Um, uh, Michelle Bennett is our public engagement specialist, but couldn't make it tonight. So <clears throat> we've been lucky enough to have Andrea join us to help facilitate the, the meeting. And I believe Nick Hutchinson as well, the city engineer has joined us. So first like to talk about some of the project limits. Um, this image on the right side shows the uh, limits for the work, <clears throat> excuse me. So Swift Road from Boulevard or Broadway Street to Wright Street uh, is within the project limit as well as Pontiac Trail, uh, about a block of it between Swift Street to Moore Street. And then at Moore Street, we have a block as well from Broadway to Pontiac Trail. And then we have a couple segments of Wright Street. One is uh, continues along Swift Street at that little 90 degree corner that will extend to the train tracks. And then we have a little block from Kellogg Street to the dead end, which is over by the cemetery. Sorry about that. So um, often we're asked, why is the project needed? And in this case, the project will update and maintain the city's aging water main system, as well as some infrastructure within the right of way to increase the longevity of its life. Uh, the existing water main size in the area is insufficient and the roadways, as many of you are familiar with, could benefit from a, a new paving. Uh, funding sources include the City of Ann Arbor Street Bridge and Sidewalk Millage and a drinking water fund. Um, some of the main points that we hope to accomplish in this project include maintaining and improving the water quality, as well as the services that um, extend to the residents and the buildings. Also to help improve traffic flow, especially for bicycles, as well as trying to encourage safe pedestrian crossings. So we're gonna re, uh, be revisiting uh, some of those crossings to see if we can make some improvements there. And then um, so some of the more, a little bit more detail on some of the project aspects include a replacement of a water main on Swift Street, a Pontiac Trail and Wright Street. Um, there's also what's called consolidation of water main on Moore Street, which Vaughn, when he uh, starts in the next slides, he can kind of explain what that means. Um, the pavement will be a uh, new resurface for all the roads within the project's scope. Um, the storm inlets that we encounter, we're also going to review and see if they need improvement to uh, help facilitate better drainage, as well as some of the pedestrian ramps and the sidewalk ramps that exist around there. We're gonna review those to make sure they're compliant with Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, we're gonna see if there's any um, potential areas to add a bump out and also to um, seek improvements at some of the crosswalks. Um, we also are looking at seeing if we can implement a bike lane on Moore Street. Uh, we're gonna try to maintain the existing on-street parking there, but it would be nice to provide a connection up to Pontiac Trail that has the bike, the bike lanes already present there. Um, we're also looking at a new bike lane, possibly on Pontiac Trail for that one block. And then as part of the uh, water main um, upgrade, we're also looking at the water services for all the buildings and the, um, um, the residents and any other businesses in the area to see if they need any uh, type of replacement or upgrade. Um, and also there's, uh, the, this is a really his, um, great area of town, a lot of character, a lot of his, history. And uh, we, we do note that in some places, especially on Wright Street, there's some really unique distinctive cobblestone gutters. And we wanna make sure we protect those type of things. So that's also why we um, really reach out to the residents and the owners to uh, seek such feedback on, on things to make sure we're all we're, we're aware of those as we proceed through the design. So now, now I'm gonna pass off the presentation to Vaughn who's gonna go through uh, street by street in a little bit more detail. 
Hi, good evening. Thanks, Chris. So starting out and to add some more focus uh, to what Chris has talked about already on Swift Street, <clears throat> Swift and Wright Street here, we are going to replace a six inch dead end water main that extends south on Wright Street. And we're gonna replace that up to the railroad right of way just south of that and connect to the existing main there and then loop the system back to, to Broadway with a, a new main, improving the, improving the overall flow and pressures through there. <clears throat> and then along with that, we'll also resurface the roadway here uh, in the areas. So outside of the trench for the water main, we will resurface the pavement. And we'll look at potentially uh, utilizing, uh, placing some parking here along the, the Swift Street, we'll evaluate that, uh, it's been discussed. And so, and then we shift to the, we shift to the, the photos that we have here. You can kind of get a look of a plan view through Google Street View and what we're looking at. So the idea is to maintain the character along each side of the, the roadway and, and not have to incorporate additional curb and, and gutter through this stretch. And again, as we said, um, tie in that water main down at Broadway and make the connection and improve the overall pressure and flows for the system. So moving on to the next section, Pontiac Trail. So we are going to add water main here between Swift Street and Moore Street and loop the system uh, to add some redundancy and provide access uh, at alternate locations here along Pontiac Trail for connection. Uh, we're gonna, as Chris already mentioned, we're gonna look at adding a, <clears throat> adding a, a bike path along the stretch along the western, perhaps along the est western uh, lane there. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous slide is we are going to add a, look at adding a bump out on the, on the north corner of Swift and Pontiac Trail. Chris, can you back up a little bit to that previous um, slide? Yeah, so here, if you, you note, know, there's a the cyan blue section that Chris is pointing at there. So that is an area where we will evaluate uh, adding a bump out and improving the safety of the pedestrians crossing there. <clears throat> and uh, you know, at each of these, at all of the intersections that we are working in, we will look at uh, improving the ADA access ramps as needed in those locations. So I think, and again, uh, I'll, similar to what we've discussed previously, we would resurface this entire stretch of road uh, in the areas where the curb is, is damaged uh, existing. We would look to, to remove and replace, you know, short sections of curb to, to improve the, the flow line and, and safety along those stretches. And so moving to Moore Street. So along Moore Street, we have two existing water mains that are present now. We have a 12 inch, and then the, the dotted line is a six inch water main, approximate locations, of course. As a part of this project, we will remove the service leads from the six inch water main and connect them to the 12 inch water main, and then abandon the six inch water main. And we'll look to, upon completion of that work, we will resurface the entire roadway. And as Chris already noted, we are looking at adding a, a bike lane along the stretch while still maintaining the existing parking along the, along the west side of the roadway. And there's some street view photos of what's, what's there now. So Wright Street, 
this is a unique section of, of roadway in that it has the cobblestone gutters, which we are saving as a part of this project and, and looking to uh, clean up and, and basically increase the longevity of what's there now. Uh, currently, we have a six inch, I'm sorry, a two inch water main along the stretch, which, which you know, is obviously providing pretty limited service along the stretch. So we will be upgrading that substantially to an eight or a 12 inch water main along the stretch. And as I indicated before, we are going to save the cobblestone uh, gutters and we will be replacing the pavement along the stretch as well. And the cemetery entrance, which is, if you look at the picture to the left, uh, it's kind of cut off a little bit, but that's the cemetery entrance all the way to the left of that photo. We're looking at doing some upgrades to the entrance there, uh, as well as the roadway looking up the picture here as we show it now. And so we, we will be coordinating specifically with all the residents uh, in these areas to, as Chris said, to make sure that we're addressing the needs uh, that are there and maintaining good contact and in that way. So with that, I'll turn over the, the remainder of the presentation to Brianna Anderson. Thank you, Vaughn. So um, looking ahead, we will continue with our public engagement activities now through the end of the year. So we will be gathering and recording all of the input, input from the community. Um, and we will schedule another public engagement meeting sometime towards um, November, December. So that will be our public engagement portion. Um, as far as design activities, we have started gathering just existing topographic data um, to begin with our design. So that will um, be worked on through February um, after we're taking in our input. Um, so 60 to 80 percent by the end of the year and then complete the design by February. And then we will put the project out to bid um, in March. That's our current plan. And then uh, construction would follow in May through September. So the summer of 2023. Now, um, as part of this project, there may be a few impacts to the local property owners and residents who are directly adjacent to the project limits that Chris and Vaughn talked about. So um, things that you can expect would be temporary interruptions to water service as those service leads are being switched from the existing water main um, to another main or to the new water main that's being installed. Um, depending on grading and what we do with any sidewalks or ramps, um, if we need a temporary grading easement um, that would entail some work on private property. But of course, if we do need that, we would reach out to individual property owners and get those temporary easements in place ahead of time. Um, in addition, there may be certain driveways that may be um, blocked off during construction temporarily um, and or along with the road paving, um, there may be portions of the drive approaches that need to be replaced um, or the curb. So those are a few of the expected impacts that may occur. And of course, um, as we um, figure out which properties will for sure be impacted, we will be coordinating directly with specific property owners and working with you to make sure that we can locate everything the best as we can to minimize disruptions. During construction, um, what we can expect is um, an anticipated duration of three to four months of construction activity um, starting in spring 2023 through the end of summer. So you can expect some dust, noise, some vibrations from heavy equipment 
and some general inconvenience, inconveniences due to um, construction acti activities. So again, we will be sure to um, notify the residents at, ahead of time. So that what that will look like is we will um, send out email notices. Um, as long as your email is provided to us, we'll be gathering that list of contact information for all the residents and businesses in the area. So you'll be notified through email. There will also be door hangers uh, distributed so that you are notified um, with a physical copy as well. And then also um, updates will be provided on the project website. Any um, lane or road closures in the area will be communicated through a press release at least seven days before the closure. And any delays or changes to the schedule will again be communicated through email, through the door notices, or on the website up updates. And um, throughout the entire construction, a city or consultant representative will be on site at all times um, and contact information will be provided for the field staff. So if you need to contact someone, you can always ask. And again, we'll, we want to work with the individual um, property owners and businesses to try to let you know as much as we can ahead of time of any disruptions. So at this point, we will begin the question and answer portion of the meeting. Um, a quick reminder, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen if you joined by a computer. And if you joined through phone, please use the star nine um, buttons to raise your hand and then we will call on you and allow you to talk for one to two minutes per person, depending on how many questions we have. And um, as we wait for some comments and questions to come in, uh, we thought of some prompts here just to get you thinking, um, this is the type of information that we're looking for. So we really want to know uh, what concerns do you have about the project? Um, what is important to you uh, related to the improvements that we've talked about tonight? Also, are there any other issues that you would like us to consider um, within the project scope? And if there is anything specific about your property that you would like us to know, feel free to bring those up at this time and then we can certainly follow up with you as well. And then also we just want to gather as much input about your preferences regarding crosswalks, the bicycle infrastructure, um, park access, on-street parking, um, any other aspects of the project that you think would be beneficial to the community, uh, that's what we're looking for. So we are all ears and, and ready to, um, I think, go through some of those questions. All right, so I think Thanks. Andrea will start us off. Yes, thank you, Brianna. Um, so yes, we have quite a few questions that came in. So I'm going to start with the first one so far. The Lower Town Mobility Study recommended improvements to the Moore Pontiac Longshore intersection, such as a roundabout and the possibility, or possi sorry, possibly two-way traffic on Moore. Are any of these included in this project? So that's up to you guys to answer. I can field that one, Andrea. Perfect. Um, uh, yes, that that uh, we're aware of those recommendations and the roundabout at that location is going to be a future project um along and and along with the conversion of Moore Street to two way um that's going to be considered for the future because uh, it's a slightly more involved project and um we also have the opportunity to get grant funding for it as well um which would not be available at this time so we're going to do the work um you know for the water main and have that ready um for the future and we will we will be back with another project in the future to consider that intersection Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to add? No. Nope. Perfect. Okay. I'm good. So moving on, do plans for this project include a potential bike lane on right between Pontiac and Broadway? Let me go back to the uh, just the aerial image so we have. Sorry. So on Wright Street. 
I think they probably mean Swift. That one block of Swift between Pontiac and Broadway, perhaps. Um, would you like to clarify that question? Um, Participate. Yes. So they said yes. You are correct in that assumption. So, do you want me to reread the question, Chris? Sure. Okay. So, do you plan for this project um, to include a potential bike lane on Swift between Pontiac and Broadway? Is what I'm understanding that that it was meant to be. Okay. So at this point in time, that hasn't really been discussed. So it is an item that we can take back and discuss with uh, uh, city staff to confirm if that might be a viable thing. Um, at this point in time, the focus is on the Moore bike lane and on uh, the bike lane on Pontiac Trail to try to help make that connection uh, from Broadway and Plymouth Road out to Pontiac Trail. Um, so, but that is a interesting comment. It's something that we'll share with staff. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next one. Will the canoe, oh, I love this, li livery, can never say that word, library, um, be closed during the construction to minimize congestion? Uh, we haven't uh, dove into any of the coordination of construction with uh, um, outside agencies like that. The, um, in general, during construction, there would probably be some detours or uh, um, allow some traffic to, definitely local traffic to access the um, homes and businesses on the road, but we might detour or bypass, um, uh, you know, through traffic, which I kind of would consider to be that, <clears throat> going to and from um, those areas. Um, so that's something that we'll look at, but um, our goal would be to try to maintain service to as many facilities and businesses uh, and operations and things around the project limits as much as possible. Um, our goal is not to shut down anything um, if we can avoid it. I would add too that it is highly unlikely that we would be able to shut down the canoe livery during the project. It's a major facility as, as uh, I'm sure you all know um, but we will need to coordinate uh, with our parks and recs department um, about the messaging and and, uh, um, and and all of that related to access to that facility. Perfect, thank you. So when Pontiac Trail is closed, where will the track be rerouted? Um, so we haven't uh, jumped into the main maintenance of traffic scenarios yet. Um, in terms of where we might route traffic or what actually we might have to shut down. Um, at this point in time, um, we're still gathering um, survey information to understand where existing utilities are at so we know where we can put in proposed uh, the water main. And that kind of guides us in ter terms of if we have to shut down the road. Um, it's possible that we might need to do this in stages so we can minimize um, detours for traffic. I know there are some ways, like maybe if we're working on Moore Street, we can facilitate one-way traffic on Moore Street while we're working on Pontiac Trail to the, to the west um, or to the south, that is. Um, I also know that there are um, other um, connection points further to the north that take you down the Plymouth Road, that it might be a possibility, but we really haven't explored all those yet. We're trying to gather up all the information so we can make very thoughtful decision. Thank you. Moving on to the next one. Is it possible to put in a pedestrian crossing from Pontiac Trail to the park entrance on Swift Street? That is one thing that we're very interested in, um, in looking at and hoping to install. You can tell that there's a need for that type of thing at that location. So that is definitely something that we're interested in seeing if we can accomplish. Thank you. Next question. Why is water main working, or sorry, why is my water main work not being done on Wright Street between Kellogg and Longshore? Nick, do so, you wanna answer that or? Yeah, I can jump in on that. Um, I, I don't know exactly the answer to that. Um, I do know that that block of Kellogg Street at the end there was an add-on to the original scope of this project. 
Um, so originally there wasn't anything, you know, um, on Kellogg north of Longshore at all. Um, and I don't remember the exact reason why it got added on. I think it might be because maybe there's a lot of break history on that pipe or something. I'm not exactly sure, but it was determined to be somewhat urgent to do that. So it got added into this project. Thank you. So and I can add too that we're not, we're not going past the railroad tracks there um, because of the fact that going under the railroad tracks is a bit of an ordeal um because there's uh there's lots of uh, it involves boring under the railroad and everything like that um and there's going to be another project in the future um to replace the water main on longshore too so that's going to pick up both of those railroad track crossings at the same time i think that's a ways down the road yet but uh, um that's why it stops on Wright street where it does around the bend there thank you nick all right, so our last question that we have so far um, is what are you going to do about those whose cars will be blocked during the Plymouth Road section? Um, Mike, could you clarify this question? Um, was, is that like during construction? Yeah, so how it was written is what are you going to do about those whose cars will be blocked during the Plymouth Road section? I don't think, clarify me if I'm wrong, there is no Plymouth Road section, am I correct? Correct. It's on so, more Pontiac Swift, right? So, um, participant, if you don't mind clarifying, oh, Pontiac Trail. Okay, so let me reread this. What are you going to do about those whose cars will be blocked during the Pontiac Trail section? So, I'm, I'm taking that as uh, during construction. Um, so, so during construction, access is maintained to all the residents and emergency vehicle access. So that is number one priority. Um, in terms of through traffic, we're definitely gonna help um, find alternate routes if we do have to shut down any sections of roadway to make sure that uh, traffic can be routed and not just kind of uh, show up in the middle of a construction zone and not where to go. So our intention is to uh, facilitate um, uh, a convenient route for traffic to um, bypass the construction. And I would add maybe just for maybe additional clarity on that. Um, if you have a driveway, um, you know, directly onto Pontiac in the construction zone, the road will be closed to through traffic, but local residents, we will maintain access to the driveways. Right. Thank you. Um, we have a unrelated question. Um, Nick, this is more directed towards you, but it'll be quick. Um, is the Tra Traverse Street water main replacement scheduled yet? Um, well, it, it's, it is scheduled in the current capital improvement plan, I think for 2024, but um, the capital improvement plan is being redone right now. And uh, I know that there's uh, um, prices have skyrocketed over the last few years, as you may know. Um, so uh, I know a lot of stuff is gonna have to get moved around in the capital improvement plan. So I can't guarantee that it's still gonna be in that year, um, but I believe that's where it, it sits right at the moment. Thank you. All right, moving on to the next question. Will the Pontiac Trail bike lane travel in both directions or only with traffic? Great question. And we don't have the answer to that yet. Um, I guess our initial assumption is it would go with the flow of the traffic and it would just be a bike lane and not like kind of a bike pathway that would have two-way operation on it. It would kind of be an extension of, um, um, of uh, keeping the one-way pairs the way they are, but trying to add in a bike lane. So bikers um, that are maybe uh, not as comfortable riding in the lane with vehicles would have a, a, a more comfortable place to, to bike. So initially that's kind of what our thoughts are, but we are going to be diving deeper into it once we get the survey in and start looking through the design to see what other options we have on that. Um, uh, at this point in time, I would say though, the main focus is just the single bike lane in the one direction that goes with the traffic. Thank you. All right. This is a this is a question slash comment. The next one. 
Will the Swift slash Broadway intersection be addressed? Installing the planned trail link from northeast bound Broadway, looped, looping back on the south side of Broadway to the B to B trail will reduce surface crossings of Broadway by bicyclists and walkers and improve safety. So the question is, will the Swift slash Broadway intersection be addressed? So the, the project extends to Broadway. That's kind of where we stop. But if there's, um, sounds like um, the person's asking about the path system and the connectivity between them, yes. um, extending further to the east. And yeah, well, north northeast, northeast bound. So we are kind of staying off Broadway, except for do to do water main connections. Um, if there's something that can be done within the context and the project limits, um, more than happy to look into that. Um, if there is something that we can provide in terms of a, a crossing or improvements um, that benefit that are within those limits, then of course, that's what we'll uh, try to focus on. But I would say the um, um, you're not intending to go beyond uh, further out into the Broadway intersection, but maybe I don't fully understand the um, context either. So maybe that's something we'll have to look into a little bit more. Hey, Larry, I'm not, uh, I'm not fully, uh, uh, I'm not sure that I am fully aware of the planned trail link that you refer to. So if you want to shoot me an email with more information on that, uh, we can certainly take a look at it. But as Chris said, I mean, our limits go up to Broadway, um, not through the intersection. So. Thank you both. So at this time, we have no outstanding questions. Um, so we're going to stay around for a little bit more in case some pop up, but otherwise, um, next Oops. steps. Sorry. So next steps are um, tentatively, we have scheduled another public meeting or we're planning to schedule in another public meeting in December. Um, my contact information is provided. Do encourage you to go visit the website that's it's been on the slide deck here on the lower right side um the uh, and you can find all the contact information there as well as updates on the project uh, I, I believe you can sign in and uh, be um well, signed up for a um, email thread on updates but feel free to email me directly and we'll try to provide you with uh regular updates as we progress and I do want to reiterate too, a lot of the properties, owners and the residents that live adjacent to the uh, impacted roadways, uh, we do want to meet with you. We do want to talk through um, the project with you so you completely understand the impacts as well as we completely understand concerns and comments. So I do encourage people to reach out to us. Thank you, Chris. I also see another question came in. So um, I'm going to ask that now if you're okay with it. Yeah, sure. Would you consider looking at running the bike lane on the left hand, so the east side of Pontiac Trail, and continue it down Swift Street to Broadway? This would eliminate issues with traffic continuing on the continuing on and coming from Swift to the west, and make a direct connection to Broadway. So, if you need me to reread that, I can. No, I, I, I think the key was on rather than the west side of Pontiac Trail on the put it on the east side of Pontiac Trail. Um, that's some, definitely something we can look at. I think that the main intent is to provide a facility for bikers that is smart and safe and comfortable for them to use. And so um, at this point in time, we don't have any real hard um, decisions made on that. We're open to ideas and we wanna uh, sit down and evaluate those. So I think We'll definitely sit down and see if that makes uh, practical sense, not just from connecting to Pontiac Trail further north, but also in connectivity going further south. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions?
are we do we have any more andrea nope nope at this time we do not however we will stay around for a little bit longer in case anything pops up or anyone pop like pops in and you know needs a little bit of context and comes a little late otherwise thank you all for coming we appreciate it um, if you have any other like questions concerns you want to meet with staff you can always reach out to chris wall his email is on the screen currently if you go to the project website there is also his information on there and this will be posted live. Um, this video will be posted to the project website um, in the very near future. Um, so you can rewatch it and see what, you know, if you missed it or if you know anyone that missed it. All right. Well, thank you everybody for attending. I hope you have a wonderful evening.